ice cores are, if you look at the situation globally, one of the, the best repositories of information about past climates and past environments. And they certainly give records at much higher resolution than deep sea sediments, for instance, which is the other place that people usually go for these kinds of records. So there's a lot to be learned from those records. The other thing is that because of climate warming, those records are, are being eroded and they're disappearing. There is a collection there that's been assembled over 40 odd years. There was a risk that it was just gonna get thrown out into a parking lot and melted. And we wanted to make sure that that didn't happen because the techniques that are available for analyzing ice cores and the range of information that can be extracted from them now are radically different from what existed at the time when the cores were collected. And we also want to develop the capability to generate new cores um, to look at a new generation of problems. And I think one of the ones that is of particular interest is um, the issue that we call legacy contaminants. And that is that there's a lot of um, pollutants which are transmitted through the atmosphere and which is scavenged from the atmosphere by snowfall. Now they accumulate in, on and in glaciers. And so there's a record of the deposition of these pollutants uh, in the ice. But not much attention has been paid to the fact that this is a reservoir of material that's often toxic in many ways, which at some point is going to come out again and back into the, into the, the water supply and will have impacts on, on human populations potentially and also animal populations. We want to get a handle on, on what pollutants are there in what sort of quantities and what's, what's the likelihood and the time scale on which they're going to come back into the environment. We already know from work that we did with David Schindler um, 10 years ago that um, uh, some of the persistent organic pollutants like DDT, um, PCBs and so on, they already have been for over a decade been released from the Columbia ice field. They end up in the fish in, in the lakes and yeah. it's amazing because the fish in Bow Lake for instance were some of the most toxic or almost contained some of the highest levels of these contaminants of fish anywhere in lakes in Western Canada even though people would think of that as generally a pristine environment but it's, it's essentially the stuff being released from, from melting glaciers that's, that's the source of it.